Hey, rock stars, Lid Sean. Welcome to Recording Studio Rock Stars. I'm excited to bring you a great guest for a video studio tour today. Our guest is Joe Carroll, joining us from Treasure Isle Recording in um, in Berry Hill, Tennessee. <laughs> So basically, Joe and I are both here in Nashville, but Joe's just across town. And because we're all in coronavirus lockdown, I figured this is a, a great opportunity for us to just go out and do some studio tours and kind of see what it looks like and uh, say hello. So how you doing, Joe? Thanks for joining uh, us today, man. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm doing real good. I, I'm uh, uh, luckily, luckily had enough work booked up previously that I, I, I'm, I'm still at it. But we'll, we'll see how long that lasts. It's getting a little, little weird out there. Yeah, I know. We're all just sort of hunkered down in our studios, um, you know, working on our own music or working on the music that we do for a living. And, um, you know, I think for a lot of us, it feels there was a funny meme that went out on the social media where it was a picture of like a mixer mixing in a studio. And then it just said like before coronavirus. And then the <laughs> picture right next to it, it was the exact same picture. And said after. Absolutely. Absolutely. If I tell you what, if I, I've already got my mind made up, if I run out of work, I'm just going to start playing guitar and drums again. The stuff that, you know, that made me fall in love with this anyway, I'm just going back to it. Just going to, sh you yeah, know, yeah. just going to shed. Because I never get to play anymore. I'm always in this chair. Well, that's awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. So I'll do a quick introduction. Um, keep it brief. Rock stars. Joe is an eight-time Grammy-nominated uh, album mixer and engineer. Um, uh, actually, I didn't notice. Were you listed as producer as well? Do you do production too, Joe? Nothing that I have produced ever was Grammy nominated. No, right. we'll, we'll see if we can change that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, no, mostly it's just mixing uh, slash um, recording. You know, in some some degree, some some records were both, some one. But uh, you know, what, just one thing: what, when you say eight time Grammy nominated, that's a real kind way of saying that I'm an eight time loser. <laughs> otherwise of one of these days maybe i'll get the grammy winning title but right now i'm just nominated <laughs> man hey dude so many we're all just like we're all just like if i could just even get nominated that would be yeah awesome. that yeah 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 i don't want to over overlook that that's for sure well let's go straight to the win so also dove award winning for um mm -hmm. songs and albums um 19 charting number ones um for mixed and recorded and um, you've got Billboard top tens in multiple categories as well. So really excited to have you on the show with us um, for this video virtual studio tour. Tell us in your own words, um, you know, where you're at right now and uh, wh wh what are you working on these days? What's exciting for you? Well, I'm, I'm really uh, lucky. I love a lot of different genres of music. Uh, you know, it, there's not any one form of music that I would want to do all day, every day for the rest of my career and kind of get pigeonholed, you know, so I'm really fortunate. I get to do a lot of different genres. It's, it's not uncommon for me to be working, maybe producing a pop artist uh, on the single and, but also having a, uh, a, some country stuff in the, you know, mixing, maybe tracking some, some orchestra, you know, mixing. It's, I get to do a lot of tracking still, and so that's a lot of fun because for me, being a musician, you know, at heart, those tracking days, hanging out with with other musicians and watching everything happen in real time, and these songs come to life, and just all the all the all the fun and the jokes and the camaraderie that happens. I never want to lose that. I, I love this. I love in, being in my mix room. That's my that's my favorite thing in the world. But not at the expense of never getting to hang with my friends. You know, I still want to, you know, anywhere from three, four. 10 days a month in, in the, you know, in a tracking room with, with the boys. Uh, that's, yeah, you can't, I'm can't down with that. that, man. You know, that's yeah. the thing that I realize is my, my absolute favorite thing to do is to just spend a day in the studio recording with friends. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, just so, so tracking it's, is a great way to do that. And, and, you know, they keep me inspired. These Nashville session players are so amazing at what they do. You, I, I've been doing this for over 20 years and I'm still blown away by them. And it keeps, it keeps you inspired to always be your, you know, if he's going to be his best out there in that chair, I better be my best right here, you know, in my chair. Yeah. So it's yeah. really inspiring. It's fun. Well, so Treasure Isle is a beautiful studio over in Berry Hill. I haven't been there in many years, but when I did, I go there. I remember uh, Ken Coomer, the drummer who played with Wilco for many years. He gave me a tour of the place once. And I remember thinking it was a really cool studio. 
Um, we'll take a look in just a moment, but the A room, I think maybe still has the same Trident console that was in there. It does. Ago, it's, right? that, that has been a Trident con uh, room since day one. I yeah. think they're on the third, the third Trident that they've had in the history of the building, which goes back to 81 or 82, I believe. Yeah. And then um, I don't remember, I think Richard Dodd is like right around the corner from you too. Right? He, he's, he's two doors down from me. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So another and, and black on the podcast. Yeah, and Blackbird's right over there. Richard's great. You know, yeah. Pete, his, his, his big buddy, Pete, which that's a funny story. It may be on another podcast for your guys. Him and Pete Coleman are best buds that go all the way back to London, you know, childhood friends and school friends, and then moved to Los Angeles together, moved here together, and ended up working, you know, two doors apart, you know, uh, as childhood friends to, to being in the third, you know, a different country, the third city, and then they, they end up two doors apart. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Well, let's uh, let's jump right in, man. Uh, you yeah. want to kind of show us around? What do you got there in your little mix world? Well, this, yeah, this is the time. B this is the B room, and it, it's kind of my my hideaway. I, I've got it, you know, set up j just for me. Um, so, but I, I, I apologize in advance to any of your viewers if I get a little shaky and weird. But yeah, we'll do our best that. not to get a, not to get um, you know Blair Witch. Uh, yeah. Uh, sick watching this but uh what's it what, like to start out like what's that big plug-in you got on the screen there what's that, that is the that's the plug-in alliance uh shadow hills uh mastering compressor that that's the class a version uh I, i've fallen in love with that thing you know it's only been out a few months and um uh, f fell in love with it i've got a great relationship with dirk and the gang over there uh considering it's a virtual relationship because they're always over there in germany <laughs> i've right. only met i've only met him in person one time but uh, i did a, a blog recently for him uh about this um compressor i just i just really love it love it a lot what are some of like if i was to just say what's the first instrument or first use case that comes to mind for that what would, what would you say well probably piano but really i use it more on busing on buses uh, it's you, it's you a compressor, bus. right? Yeah, it's a compressor. It's uh, two compressors in one. You got the um, um, the optical compressor. You got the VCA style compressor, and then um, you know some uh, you know selectable output transformers. Kind of you know a lot of people that know Shadow Hills. That's kind of their thing. You know, even in their mic pre's and stuff. I believe they have nickel and steel and iron transformers you can choose between. And now it's a subtle difference, but it's a difference. You know the nickel. D definitely sounds different than the steel, you know, for example. So use that to your advantage, you know. Right on, man. All right. And so then uh, uh, those are nice candles. What what flavor are those? <laughs> those are those are LED, but you know, they're just they're they're battery, battery scented. Oh, smart move. You don't have to burn the studio down. <laughs> exactly. You vibe I'm, it out. I, listen, I'm a really my uh, vibey mood guy. I, I like my rooms sometimes kind of dark and lots of different lights and uh, I'm really into nostalgia stuff. I like having some you know um things that you know remind me of records gone by or even childhood things that made me fall in love with music I, i'm all about that kind of stuff all right so let's talk about your monitors what do you like to mix on up there uh I, man i have been using these the same thing for years uh the the good old ns10s um i came up i'm old enough that i didn't come up you know in the newer more modern you know going to a university and then uh, that kind of a thing i um I got started the old way uh, under a, an established pro as a, as you know, his, his assistant. And, you know, you, you learn, uh, you, you can't help but be a creature of, you know, uh, it, it really changes who you are and develops who you are depending on who you work under. But, you know, so my guy was an NS10 guy and I had never heard him until I started working with him. And at first I hated him like everybody else. And now, of course, you know, once you figure out, wow, that mid range exposure and what I can do with that and, and how it helps me EQ properly, you know, all those bands that overlap in the real, you know, audible range there. Um, they're, they're just a real go-to for me. I love those. Uh, for my big full range speakers, those are just JBL 4328s. I've had them for 12 years and I know there are more glamorous and, and more uh, highly lauded, more expensive speakers out there. But for monitoring, for me, it's all about familiarity. You know what I mean? As long as it's a really good speaker, I don't care what brand name is on it. If I know it, uh, that's 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 how I make a good record. Not because the, the, yeah. the speakers cost $7,000 or $10,000 or what names on them. It's just how well do I know them and, and can I work on them? And 
I, I've been very tempted to pull the trigger on a couple other, you know, uh, more, um, you know, more recently cheered and lauded uh, speakers. And I always back out at the last minute because it's like, dang, I just, I know these guys, I'm comfortable. And, you know, I, so I, I probably won't change until both pairs die, which one pair did die recently. So I'm on my backup <laughs> pair now. So we'll see how much time I got left. And so lastly, I have a, I have a pair of power JBLs tier two that are, uh, you know, about 12 years old or something like that. And, and, um, I think of them as not particularly hyped. They're sort yeah, of full range, yeah. but, but not, they're not trying to super hype the sound at all. No, I, I just, I just really love them. Like I said, it's just a matter of comfort. You know, I'm not, you know, recommending anybody go out there and look them up on eBay to replace their focals or whatever. It's just, it's just what I, what I know. And then lastly, because of my guy that I came up under Oratones, good old classic Oratones there. Um, that's great. You know, with I, the I grapes, with the raisins on there. Yeah, with the California raisins. And, and, you know, keep chasing that Grammy. I got my little Grammy reminder there. It's like one of these days you got to win one of these things. And, um, but yeah, my guy, you know, it was an NS10 and Oratone guy. And, and here I am 20 something years later <laughs> doing, the, doing the same thing. But I keep them, I'm trying to go slow here so I don't give you guys a, a whiplash. Uh, I keep them, you see, over to one side, right beside each other. So essentially I'm hearing mono. And not even, you know, in a sweet spot or anything like that. And, and that's a really good reference for um, left and right stuff. Let's say you're working on a country song that has, uh, you know, like a doubled acoustic guitar that's really driving things. And, then of course, your lead vocal and your snare drums in the middle driving things. You get a really good idea of just how uh, driving the acoustics are or aren't because you can deceive yourself when you're listening in full stereo. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, absolutely. About, you, you get apparent volume sometimes that's not actual volume if somebody's not in the sweet spot. So that, that, that's just a real good little double check for, for the real narrow bandwidth of mid range. And then also how much uh, stereo information you, you know, apparent volume you're getting versus real volume, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, uh, Jamie Tate had pointed that out to me once. He, I think he described it as like big mono or something. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's it, the two. You get the mono effect, but also by not hitting the mono button when you're mixing over to those little guys, you're not canceling out the, um, the phasiness of the reverbs and things like that. So you're you get a little more you're, accurate, yeah. action, right? You're precisely right. I, I really, um, I, I don't spend very much time on them. But just a, a double check here and there is all I need, you know. So they're they're really valuable for that. And then uh, do you want me to run down the t just, yeah? Uh, so what else you got there? That, is, is that the warm audio? EQ? That's the warm. Yeah, I've got a, a. That's another company I have a great relationship and really really respect their products. I know they're affordable, but um, they're great, and they do it by you know buying the the expensive components like transformers and and the capsules and things like that in massive bulk, so it really can drive the price down. But this is their I use these on the stereo bus when I'm mixing hybrid, you know, so um, today's mix, the stereo bus is, is, uh, is in, you know, internal. So I'm, I'm well, not hold even on, touching. Hold on, you got to go back. We got to see what frequencies you got going on there. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's how kind do of we, a, how do we do, how do we put, you know, these tube EQ? Right, on, right. I, on, I, uh, usually boost, bus. I usually boost the bottom end down at 30 cycles. I know that seems really low, but guys, Pultex are really broad paintbrushes. So if you if you turn this up up into sixty, you're all of a sudden you're way up. Also dealing with frequencies up around one hundred and fifty. You turn it up at hundred, all of a sudden that mid range three hundred cycles that you've really worked at clearing a lot of stuff away, you're you're affecting it just because it's such a broad you know paintbrush. Yeah. So I leave it down at thirty, and I boost and cut. You know, on uh, so usually you know it's like a, let's say I boost by three. I'll cut by one and a half, or I boost by two, I cut by one. The, and that the, gives you one of those curves where you get a little exactly, bit of a boost, the but filter, then it rolls back off. Exactly. The filter shapes are different, and it just makes everything, it makes the extreme bottom end bigger without being muddy. It's, it's, a, great, it's a great tool. And you can do this with you know, any Pultec clone or real Pultec. They all, they all kind of work in the same way. You, you, that, uh, that overlapping frequency trick of cutting and boosting the low end at the same time is a, is a legit deal. And then on the high end, it's always, for me, it's always 12K, if you can see that. And I, I boost just a little bit. Just, just I, I'm not trying to, you know, do massive uh, EQ across my stereo bus. It's just, just a little icing on the cake. It's like sweetening. It's just like a smiley yeah. sweetening. 
Yeah. I, I probably have a lot more preamps in here than I need. I probably should move some of these to the A room because they'd get more use in there. But a couple of the warm audio tone beasts, if you can see that. Uh, Universal Audio 610. That's my only tube. Uh, that's my only tube preamp in this room. And then a little 500 series rack. It's got some uh, grace, got some warm audio, got some API. Um, I, I typically just use, leave those inserted on my um, uh, guitar you know master you know like my instrument master uh not 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 the drums or vocals included just just that buzz oh, the, the the 550 uh, bs the ap yeah I yeah the 550 bs yeah and, and then now, the, so you got those are different mic pre's you got the warm mic pre's and then you got the grace right yep um how would you describe the use cases like what what's first instrument comes to mind for the warms and then first for the grace well the the, the warm there's kind of and i've got some of those in here too the the api uh, 312. It, it's kind of based on that design, but a little more, um, a little more har harmonic. It's not quite as clean as the API. It's it's not it's not as harmonic as a Neve, but it's you know somewhere in between, leaning more API though. So you know you, any anything that an API sounds good on, which is you know everything. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Pretty much. Yeah, they're 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 great tools. I I, I don't use them much, uh, honestly. I I typically use the you know, the Neve, uh, I've got some real Neve, and we'll get to it. I've got some real Neve stuff as well as some warm audio Neve stuff. And I, 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 I use those a lot. Uh, uh -oh, we just lost your image there. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, don't know how that happened. Okay. Right. I was getting a phone, yeah, good. phone call. Sorry about that. Anyway. Um, um, I use, I use the Neve stuff, you know, whether it's clones or, or the real thing or API, uh, you know, more than I use, you know, or, or clones of API more than I use anything else currently. But um, the Grace, honestly, uh, uh, some orc dates, the room mics on some orc dates uh, uh, when I had them in, in, a, in a portable rack. And that's about it. They're too clean for me, uh, quite honestly. I, I'm a real, I, I love transformers. Uh, I like color and harmonics. And those are so invisible and transparent that um, I think for people in the, you know, that's in the, um, uh, classical world, you know, love that millennia grace kind of thing. For me, I'm, I'm typically working on, you know, rhythm section stuff and country and rock and pop and, you know, bluegrass or whatever. I, I'm looking for transformer color. I, I, I've yeah. just never really found a, a love for those. But one thing I am loving though, is these, see these orange boxes right here, the radial. Yeah, that's cool. And what are those up for? Those are reamping. So th th they allow me to take my collection of guitar pedals and you know insert them on vocals bass guitar you know drum uh mono room mics just you know various things like that and i have i've had a ton of fun bringing in pedals and, and you know, like the record i'm doing today every um because it's this is all recall stuff you know the record's done just minus a couple little tweaks and every song has you know various guitar pedals on the bass guitar and it's just it's a black you know mixing should be fun it, it, it's a lot more than the technical. Like if it, in order for us to get great results, we need to be having a good time doing what we're doing. And if yeah. it means to real knobs, if you're like, well, Hey, the software version of that is just as good in many cases. That's absolutely true. But sometimes just turning real knobs, man, if that puts a smile on your face and makes the day happier, then the song's going to be better for it. You, you know, it just yeah. really is. We need, it we also, need it brings uh, you into the mix a little more. Absolutely. We, we just, we really need to love what we're doing. Sometimes we don't always love the song. So turning real knobs, any, anything you can do, candles, I don't know, I, whatever, whatever makes the day <laughs> what's better. The, uh, what's the gray pedal with a, with a jug of whiskey on there? That's that, awesome. <laughs> that's the J8HS Moonshine pedal, which is really great. Uh, I've got a bunch of pedals over here. I'll show you, kind of give you a rundown of them. But I had that on bass guitar in one song. We used it on some electric guitars on this album too. And then that's um, the the Keeley, um, um, oh, what's it called? The blues blues driver or whatever. It, yeah, it's blues, it's a cool it blues drive. Guitar. I think I can read it. Yeah, I had it on a different song. Then I've got uh, the yeah, the there's, there's a classic. Yes, it is. Um, I I don't use it as much as you would think I would anymore. It's amazing. It's it's one of the best tools of all time, but. I know it's got limited days left, you know, I mean, that's just the, that's just the way it is. It, it's, it's, it's one of these days it's going to run out and, and I'm gonna have to make that choice of 
do I spend, you know, $1,300 repairing it if it can be even repaired or, or whatever. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of picky about what I use it on, but I, I have this, you know, um, you know, there's other versions of the, the 480 out there now and the 224. Yeah. And I, I use that, that, I don't know if any of you guys have it, but the Relab LX 480 and I use, you know, it's got the same patches on it and I use it instead of, the, it sounds just like it. I mean, it sounds amazing. And I know, you know, I can recall the mixes and one day I'm just really going to be sad the day that this guy don't uh, pass signal anymore. Well, you know? as long as the lights come on, you can just keep that on the desk because it makes everybody <laughs> feel good. We had this, um, when we did a studio tour with Evan Baki, um, they had a 480L remote on there and it just reminded us of the Coleco electronic football game. Oh yeah. Yeah. The Western digital uh, calculator when we were kids or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, absolutely. Then you got uh, the distressors. The, yeah. A couple of distressors in so there. What, what's um, the first, what's the first thought that comes to mind for you? Do what you use on the distressors drums for sure. I mean, they, they just do that good. thing. They're, they're amazing. At and what which kind do. of settings? What are, what are some go-to settings? I, I, for me, it's usually slower, slower attack and, and the fastest release possible. And it just, and then from there, it's just how much I, is it, is it, a, is it a snare drum or a kick drum that I'm, I'm just kind of tickling a little bit, or is it some room mics or something that I'm crushing? And then, you know, that, you, you know, you check, you can change your ratio accordingly, but, but, uh, but yeah, I don't use those on a lot of things as far as, you know, electric guitars and, and, uh, keyboards and everything else. It's, they're, they're just a couple trick pony for, for me. I'm not saying they're not good at all that other stuff, but I, you know, that's just not the way I use them. And I've customized, yeah. Yeah. I've customized mine with some fun little, nice. <laughs> uh, I, I, that's just my personality. I just <laughs> I'm a fancy the myself. Duh, and, stressor. Like, yeah. Yeah. I like, Remove to, I, the like duh. I like to laugh. That's the new warm audio, uh, bus compressor SSL style. It's really cool. Uh, Liz, it, it, it's, it, it's got, um, it's some different ratios, you know, some softer ratios than my SSL does, as well as this output transformer engage option. That's, that's legit. Like when you engage those things, you, it, it, now again, it, it's subtle, but, but you hear it. And that's something my, my real SSL don't have. And, and I mean, I've got a, I'll get to it, but I've got a real SSL over here and I, I, I like them. Um, to me, they both sound, you know, the same. This one's just got a few more options which is is great you know it's 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 fun and, and then that's uh, from warm audio as well that is from warm audio yeah that's one of their newest products that just came out what is the um, model on that guy it, it's just called bus comp bus comp okay cool yeah, yeah and that's yeah, what i've been warm, doing those I, guys are making some really cool stuff at warm oh audio. gosh it's and that's like what seven hundred dollars or something and you're like well that, that that means they have to be cutting corners somewhere but man they're not it sounds amazing they just sell that you know they sell it in massive bulk i mean that is just as solid and legit as any brand out there it's just you know i, I know sometimes that some of us and me included at, at one point had had this mindset if it don't cost a certain number it can't be great and they've really right, changed my right. mind so audio technica changed my mind originally back in the day with the like stuff like the 4033 and yeah still got well, one i got my classic one my collector absolutely edition. you know it's it there are used to you know the saying you got what you paid for was was 100 percent accurate it's not always accurate anymore in our world and thank god because you know we, we've got we both have friends that they just can't they can't go out and spend three thousand dollars on a u47 clone or twelve thousand sure, dollars yeah. on a real one or whatever but if they can get one for you know for a thousand from from warm or one of the other companies that's cloning it um then all of a sudden they have that kind of a tool in their arsenal so good good for them you know what's that right below it that is the um, um, Sonic Comp from uh, John Oram. You, you, you know, he was, uh, know uh, one. He was one of them that designed the Trident 80. Oh, John okay, Orm. right on. Yeah, yeah. If you can look him up. O-R-A-M is his last name. He's, he's a console designer, you know, what, and this is, his, this is one of his guys. And it, it's, it's basically their take on a bus compressor, but it's also got an optical compressor option. It's, and it's, it's, uh, it's not as aggressive as an SSL, it doesn't do that, but what it does, it does very well. So it's just kind of a fun, you know, secondary flavor. And, right, then, and uh, then I noticed your, uh, your monitor controller. I've got the same one here. Tell us what you like about that then. Well, it, it's just so easy, you know, like you can, you can, um, 
you, you can have what what is it four sets of speakers heads you, up, you we're know starting which, to get you you got a good looking finger there we're getting we're seeing oh i'm seeing sorry right there in the camera. <laughs> uh, you, you got four sets of speakers which is important to me because i like a lot of speakers i, I i'd probably have seven pairs if i could because i've got a sub down here would too you, that's would uh, you mind pointing to the different buttons that you would have to hit to switch the speaker yeah so like hopefully tell me if my finger it. tell me if my finger's getting in the way uh that's my oh, your, your main speakers the, i'm sorry that's your main speakers that's your secondary, in, in my case, that's NS10s. Right here, up, you know, that's my uh, Auratones. And if I want to engage my sub, you know, I can, I can put, them, put the sub on Oh, with. right, that's right. So you can turn the sub on and off in case you want yeah, to. Yeah, and use, I could use it with my NS10s if I wanted. I don't, but, uh, you know, you could. And then you've got your, you know, I can, you know, listen to Pro Tools here, uh, my aux cord here, you know, that kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it's, I just, I, I like it. It, it, it sounds... To me, it doesn't have a sound, uh, which is great, you, you know. Um, it's it's all, very transparent. Yeah, yeah. Very and, the knob, the knob. and then the mono switch over there is really useful if you want to send That's a mono. very handy. Yes, and very and handy. You know, you know, Joe, another thing I do like to do with mine sometimes is I'll hit the mono button and then I'll mute like the right speaker or the left speaker and I'll just turn towards one of my speakers and mix on that in mono for a little bit. And that's pretty There you cool. go. Yeah, cool, yeah, cool I've never thought about that, but it's that this kind of a box allows you to do that kind of a thing, that's for sure. You can have multiple sources, you know. Sometimes uh, I set it up to where um, um, now, of course, there's software to do this now, but back in the day, I, I would set this knob right here up as three and four outside of, of Pro Tools. And if I had a reference mix, I could quickly just do that, you know, if the artist was like, yeah. Man, I really want this to yeah. sound like that, that Keith Urban song or whatever, I could do that quickly. Again, you know, we have software to do that now. You know, from, you know, like plug-in alliance, but it, I don't know. I, I, I like it. I bought it by, I, because I had to, I was working on an anal, you know, the monitoring section of, of an analog console when I originally got it and it, it fried one morning and, and I, I was in the middle of deadline. So I had to run to guitar center <laughs> and get something. So, but, but now, now I'm in love with it, you know, um, up what here, do you got over there? More warm audio. Look at more, that. Yeah. This is their 1073 clones. And what, what I do with these specifically, these are the non EQ models. And, and, and you can see, I, I, it's just to pass my buses through real transformers. Okay. So the vocals, the vocals, you know, will go through here. The drums will go through here. The, uh, you know, all the electric guitars and keyboards, whatever will go through here. And I'm hitting real transformers. You know, you can calibrate them to where, you know, they're, uh, you know, at, at minus 18 and you're, you know, you know what I mean? Calibrate them uh, appropriately. So, uh, um, you're hitting them at the right levels and all that kind of right, stuff, but right. real, just some real analog flavor I can bring into a, a, a you know, a, um, mix that otherwise may be largely in the box. So, um, right on. Then over, looks like you got some fun stuff up there. It looks like you're, you're doing your DJ. You're letting your yeah, DJ yeah, out that's, there too. You know, when, when you're producing pop and stuff, you know, the, the machine, you know, from native instruments, machina, I think is actually what it's called. Um, uh, this is, you know, the Avalon 737. Still oh, one of yeah, my that's favorite. That's a classic. You know, one of my absolute favorite vocal channels ever. And I love th these ca this case here from Gator. You know, it's the Seafoam Green. They've got this vintage guitar yeah. series. Uh, it, it looks like, it looks like uh, oh, shoot, I can't think of what that material's called on some of those Alex old Fender. or something? Something like that, yeah. But you can get it in a tweed, which, you know, at some point I'll probably own the tweed version too. I'm just, uh, I, I like stuff that makes me happy. You Will know, you get a seafoam green tweed? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that would be cool. Uh, that's one of my guitar pedals. I, in fact, let's just do guitar pedals real quick. Sure, we love guitar pedals. Oh, yeah, the I've got uh, two, more, two more reamping boxes here, um, you know, that, that come through the radial. And then go out a, a stereo DI from radial and then into pre's, you know, whatever pre's I select. But you see the, uh, you know, a chorus, the, um, the uh, MXR submachine, the, o, the Nobles. I love that pedal. The Nobles o, ODR1. Just that's probably my favorite overdrive that I own, honestly. Right on. Um, I know that one. The Pog from Electro Harmonics. Um, that's the, the only. Pog kind of makes it sound like an organ or something, right? Well, it, no, this is the one that's uh, it's sub octaves and stuff. Okay, you know right. so I mean? just it yeah, adds like octaves, deep yeah. richness to whatever sound you're creating. Exactly, I've got it on bass guitar on one song on this album. Uh, memory Man, that, that's that's an unusual Memory Man. Some of your guys that are guitar players know about that one. That does a bunch of different things. Um, then uh, of course a tube screamer. Everybody's got to have a tube screamer. 
um, it's a little Plex. Echoplex uh, pedal. Yeah, it's sort of mimicking the tape Echoplex. Yeah. yeah, I really like it. I've never had it, you know, up pulled up side by side with an actual Echoplex because I don't have one. But I do know I like that pedal. I've used it on lead vocals on on this this record I'm working on now. Well, I can tell you uh, what my Echoplex sounds like. It sounds like nothing because it stopped working again. <laughs> yes, that's the fe- yeah, that's the fear. Yeah, uh, vocoder. Um, that that that's cool. That's a little box that Ibanez came up out with in the in the '80s. Uh, more chorusing. I'll go back down here. Just a cheap little delay, just because it, it, this this it's it's only like it's not very expensive at all from TC Electronic, but it goes into self oscillation super easy and like too easy for some people. But that's all I wanted it for. You know, I could take a guitar chord, put it at the end of a session you know route it into this guy and in real time make some crazy stuff happen you know what i mean and fly that just in like runaway and, delay kind of thing oh yeah yeah it's a lot of fun of course the classic ocd oh there it was the i was just uh i was just having exchanging emails with uh michael fuller of, of full tone just just oh just that's cool there. that's cool just 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 you know most metal. of this stuff oh, this is fun on drum loops you can have a lot of fun with this guy yeah you know there, there's uh some um dan electro stuff right there now, of course, there's a vintage cool guy right there. Oh, that's beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's, uh, it's fun. All right. So there's I'll, a super I'll, chorus, too. Nice, man. You got all the class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I just, again, I don't even play guitar. I mean, I do, but that's not what they're here for. They're just for, here for fun on drum loops and vocals. And I mean, anything that, you know, whatever. Whatever makes my day more fun and makes the record better is, is, is cool in my book. So awesome. there's the, uh, the warm audio version of the, like a, like a 3124, which I have that too, but I took it out and put it in the big room because I, I actually liked this better, which I know a lot of people are going to gasp and sigh, but I do. Um, now that's my real SSL. It don't, I know you look at it, you think, well, that don't look like a real SSL. That's, that was handmade here in town, you know, from Warren Rhodes. You, you know him, the SSL guy for years here. Um, that's all SSL components just in a different box. You know, he had, tons of old consoles and work in a in his shop uh yeah, components now, now what's, so, that, what's these uh, little number decals what's that all about oh that's that's how i know where they show up on my patch bay is that like some clever do you just like have magnets or something going yeah, on yeah that's just it? magnets with stickers on them that way i don't have to print up labels i can just and however i rearrange my racks i can always quickly you know i don't worry i don't have to worry about labels that are printed up being wrong or whatever that's genius, I, have, man, I love it. Yeah, I had it. Well, I, I wish I could take the credit, but I had a former assistant that thought of that. And I was like, oh my God, you know, that's, that's, that's amazing. So like right now I'm using these tone beasts today. This is the older tone beast from warm audio. It's, you know, think again, think of it as an API with just a little more color. Um, that's what my re my pedals are coming back through. And cause these guys can get really hairy if you want them to. And so that that's what the RA one and two that that's what that stands for. Yeah, that makes uh, this, sense because the pedals you're usually trying to create a new sound anyway, and that just gives you like more. Yeah, more even more exactly. Exactly. So I, I I've never even used a different preamp with the the pedals. It's always the tone beast for me. That piece right there, that's also something that Warren Rhodes made for me. Um, that's actually two channels out of the old Neve console that was Ronnie Millsaps. Oh yeah, they look, so, they look like VR knobs. It's it yeah it's the well right before the VRs what did they call that the eighty one hundred, um, okay, right. which a lot you know I know a lot of people don't love that console you know it does and it, they're right it's a chip based preamp compared to the ten seventy three that was um you know that was all full discrete and stuff but pulled out of here with its own power supply I'm telling you what they sound surprisingly good but for me it was really just the fact that when they were decommissioning Ronnie Millsap's console it's like I want a piece of history you know. Uh, yeah, that's just yeah. something for me to pass down to my kid. Uh, do I ever use them? Absolutely. But, you know, at the time I remember thinking, man, if my son falls after me, I can play him Smoky Mountain Rain and say, hey, that may have been recorded through two of these. <laughs> you know, that's a manly, yeah, manly uh, stereo uh, ELOP. Um, it's very, very fast. It's an it's think of an LA 2A, LA 3A kind of thing. I know it's two. So it's more like an LA 2A, but it's fast as lightning um what instrument what's the first instrument that comes to mind keys okay cool yeah yeah it's so fast but basically Uh, it just it just handles the attack of a piano oh my gosh yeah it's uh 
I, I don't know how they made an uh, opto circuit that fast. I really don't. It's it's pretty pretty impressive. It's a unique animal. Uh, that if you can see it down there, right above the patch bay, is um, that's two channels of old uh, twelve seventy two modules pulled out of an old Neeb console. Oh, um, very cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Dan Alexander out of San Francisco, he made those. I think he still is making them, but I don't know if they're actually out of consoles now. You know, this one's really old. It's been so around. Pair of mic preamps again and direct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, basically, if your followers don't know, a 1272 is a, the same exact circuit as a 1073, which is highly coveted, but it stops at 50 dB of gain. Uh, you know, a 1073, you, you, they, they've probably noticed, I was like, why is this off position in there? I go up to 50 dB, and, and then to get more gain than 50 dB, I have to go through the click, you know, the off click, and then back up to 55. That's because it has to engage a separate, you know, part of the circuit to get more than 50 dB of gain. But anytime you're using less than 50 dB, a 1272 and a 1073 are the same thing. And the 1272 are cheaper. So that's something, you know, maybe you guys want to keep in mind when they're looking at vintage components I and mean, they get oh, you know they, they used to be cheaper but now that you've let the cat out of the bag <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and then you know the, this that's a the neve uh i'm sorry the warm audio version of the neve 1073 and that's the ones i actually track with you know the other ones up in my rack like i said are just returns um i got three of their 1176s in here um yeah that's great man and those again, to, much great price point compared to trying to find a vintage one, you know. Oh yeah, DBX one hundred and sixty, the original VU, as well as the right. XT. There, got to keep hitting you with this question. So, uh, warm warm audio or what is it? WA seventy six. What do you use it on? I use them in this room mostly from well, during tracking session. I would use them on drums. Number one, uh, number two, I would use them on um, vocals or vocal tracking. Uh, I, I love them. It depends on the record. I'll, I'll either go with, the, you know, my LA-2A style or my Gates style or this. And it just depends on how aggressive and, you know, the, you know, I want, like, this record I'm mixing today, for example, was all, it's rock, so it was all tracked to this because it's very aggressive. Now, you know? I, so, I notice uh, you've conspicuously not mentioned a compressor for guitars yet. You know what? Oh, I just put the, my finger in front of the camera. These, right, we really, for, we were getting to know your finger really well now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm so sorry about that, guys. Uh, for, for, for guitar tracking, I like an 1176, not compressing, though. You know, like turn, you know not, not compressing at all, uh, just going through the transformers. And an LA-3A at the, doing the same thing. Maybe the LA-3A needle moving a little bit, but not very much. I really don't want to change the dynamic the, the, what, of what the guys are doing. You know, I can do that later in the mix or whatever. But during tracking, you, you know, I think a lot of instruments, it's important, acoustic guitar players, piano players, all that feel some level of dynamics. So I don't, I don't compress a lot while I'm tracking, to be yeah. honest. I mean, I, I may have a compression on several sources, but it's, it's not doing a whole lot, if that makes any sense. Yeah, and I mean, when it comes to guitars, you already have a combination of, you know, compressor pedals a guitar player can use if they oh, want yeah. and the that amp. sound. And the, and amp, the amp itself, is it's already yeah. compressed. Yeah. The distortion. When, you, when, when you're when you're when you're throwing, you know, that many decibels through a, a speaker cone, it's going to compress. Um, speaking of drums, the, yeah, the DBX one hundred and sixty, um, whether it's the old, you know, original VU like this one, which the light is burnt out, or these and XT. Who, who got the sticker there? Oh, that that sticker of my face. <laughs> you, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had an intern play. I got in a prank war when I. At one time, I had a, a room on lockout down at Omni on Music Row. So you, you know that room. Um, and I got into a prank war with the interns, and that's leftover residue from, the, from that. We had a good time, man. We had a really good time with that. So uh, do you want me to move, move up here? I got uh, a couple more 160s. Uh, this, that's the X. And that's the original one. The, the, you know, yeah, the, so what, the, what about the, those? What, what instrument for the 160S? Drums. Drums, totally drums. Yeah, snare top and bottom. Kick. If, 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 you know, that's not my first choice on kick, but I love it. Uh, tom Toms, overheads, you name it. That's on brass days. You know, if you want to tickle a little bit of dynamic on brass, you know, I think they're, they're great options for that as well. Uh, I don't have them on. I, I, use, I keep my tube gear off if I'm not using it. Uh, th those are the LA-2A clones from Warm Audio. I have a couple of those. Uh, my go-to for those would be bass guitar tracking days and vocal tracking days, for sure. 
Um, yeah. But you know what? I actually, and I don't, I wish I could give proper credit to whoever it was, but one of these old legendary engineers that we all would know their name if I, if I said it. Um, I read an article with him and he was saying that LA two A's were one of his favorite kick drum compressors. And I was like, what? You know, like on really? tracking day. And I was like, that, that doesn't sound right at all. My next tracking day. What do you think I did? Just cause I got to know. Right. It was amazing. It sounds like the kick drum, except just bigger and better. It, it, the attack, you know, and release characteristics work amazingly well with the kick drum. So, I use them You're on track. You're not like days. burying the needle. It's probably just like a no, little. No, no, no. You only you only screen. want to see the needle move uh, no more than like two dB, mostly one dB. Because the thing is, you know, first of all, VU meters aren't all that accurate. You're get we're getting more compression than what they tell us we yeah, actually yeah, are. Yeah, right, but right. I I think part of the sound of the LA two A on kick drum is that it hasn't released. You know, it's got that the last half of the release is very slow, so it hasn't fully released when the next kick drum strike happens so it's shaping every hit you know including the transit even though the transient's getting through in large part does that make any sense i, I yeah it's 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 I, sort yeah. of leveling it's it's overall leveling the kick drum and, and adding some consistency to it probably yeah yeah it up forward uh, the whole time and making it sound bigger it really does add some girth and heft it's uh i i recommend guys try it because i know a lot of people don't has have never done that um i know i hadn't I, and i never would have if i hadn't read that article in mix you know like 15 years ago or whatever it was um all right here's a here's a trick question for you out of all the compressors you've shown which one would you grab for tambourine <laughs> the dbx 160 easy all right dig it yeah yeah um there, there, there's the gate stay level now this is a uh, beautiful man beautiful yeah, I, now that isn't an actual gate that is a recreation that i think um what is that company that makes those kits drip or something like that? Oh, cool. Um, yeah. So that one's only, you know, maybe three years old or something like that. Um, then underneath that, the AMAC 9098, that's a Rupert Neve channel. Um, some of you may know Rupert, you know, um, after he sold Neve, he went with Focusrite. And then after he left Focusrite, he started uh, working with AMAC after the Forte console. And right, the, you know, right. what came out of that was the AMAC 9098 which is in a, just a beautiful desk. The pre's are beautiful. The, the, my, the, the uh, EQ is beautiful. And I ultimately want two channels of that. But most of my early, a lot of my early career was spent cutting and mixing on a 9098 desk. So I've just got a real love affair with those things. Um, there's another Pultec. That one's just, uh, that's the, again, the warm audio version. And that's something I can throw across a lead vocal or like recently, um, I just had a saxophone through there recently that was a, it was a jazz tune that the, the, you know, the, the saxophone was the lead. So, um, I could, you know, use some, some, uh, outboard stuff to get him, you know, sounding great. That's just some, oh, um, yeah. leftover, uh, effects. That I know, not look, at that, look at the Insonic TP4. I got one right here in my rack. Yeah, I've got, I have two of those. This one's not even hooked up. That's just a spare. And that was actually Clint Black's, you know, some of you country music fans may know, uh, no, Clint Black. That was actually his. What were so, some uh, things like? I, I've got mine. I'm guilty of not even firing it up and having it hooked up. But I, I just, I always have this sense like there's a whole bunch of gold living inside there that I'm not. Oh yeah. To. What What oh, are some I, effects you would use it for that you remember? Um, acoustic guitar was kind of my favorite. Um, I, I've got another one over here that is still hooked up. Do you remember that patch called? Um, was it acoustic guitar wide or something like that? Sort of like it's that like was, a. a pitch shifting widener effect yeah i used that on the acoustic guitar and there was a chamber they had an exceptionally good sounding chamber in there um i haven't used it to be real honest just uh fully disclosed here i haven't used it in a couple of years um you yeah, know the plugins it's just so easy you know it, it's 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 just so easy and spe and then we'll go back but like you here. said before once you start using the outboard gear it's just it, may, it turns it into fun again and then you it discover is. these sounds you're like man i couldn't get that sound with exactly. a plug in Exactly. There's, There's the DP or the um the um oh I can't even the D what four DL four right? yeah, I think it was yeah. called yeah from uh, uh line six this I bought this specifically the auto wall That's got, I think I have that or I have the Q wall you try it on some drum loops or something someday oh my gosh yeah it's so much fun getting the the vowel sounds into a snare drum or something uh, these are a couple bass uh, you know pr almost like a preamp pedal if you want to 
think about it that right way. On, right on. And then uh, I've got these hooked up by MIDI. The the Line Six, uh, you know, that's the uh, delay box. You know, the echo box up there. And what's, there's the filter. What's the red one there? Is that the modulation or something? Yeah, that's the well, that's the filter box. Filter box. Yeah. So it just it just I haven't used that one. So that just basically mimics different sort of EQ filters. Yeah, sweeps and I mean, you know, but it's tempo. It's 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 cool. Uh, it's hard to. It's almost hard to describe. It's one of those things I'd have to almost you know like play music through it and show you someday. It's 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 cool though. And it, as well as this guy right here, Electro Harmonics, uh, or not Electro Harmonics, Electrics. Um, they, they don't make these any, anymore. I, I think I they had three or four. Things. What was that yeah. called again? This, is, this one's called the Mof, Mofex, uh, like M-O-F-X. Right. But and it's this, got this basically, this is like late 90s into early 2000s. Um, this is like, you know, spin out of like DJ action and right. let's filter our, <laughs> let's do cool stuff to our loops and let's bust out the... Uh, the role in 303 and start programming, you know, drum and bass stuff, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. This has built in distortion, flange, tremolo, and delay. And, you know, at one time, you know, before plugins made it so much easier, this stuff, you know, it was, it, I mean, it was just invaluable. In fact, all three of these units here, I got in a trade from a session drummer here in town. You probably know his name. I won't say his name, of course, but uh, you, you probably know him. We've worked with him. Uh, big name he wasn't using them anymore you know i mean like the loops he were he was doing all his loops and stuff inside of like stylus on his laptop so this stuff had yeah. just been getting you know tanked around town by cartage set up but it was never you know it, i think he told me it had been three years since he'd passed the signal through it and he was just like you know because i offered him i was like man you know i would love i would love the green one especially i'd yeah, love to have one of those and just keep it set up on, on midi to a, to a to a tape this one particular tape setting and um just always have it there and he was like you know like well what do you got to trade so so we made it work out um and it's been fun but uh now no, i'm we not did using him a favor he didn't have to take it home with him so now that's with exactly the green, right with the green delay does that do like an external tap tempo trigger if you want it to i bet it does. yeah i've got a exact i've got a midi box right here that's you know hooked up to the computer mm -hmm. um so whatever tempo of the song is, as long as I, you know, hit that button inside of Pro Tools, these will chase to it. So right, you can, right. you know, you can leave it set up to an eighth note, quarter note, sixteenth note, whatever. And it's, you know, to one of your favorite settings, like you see how far it is from my chair. It's all the way in the back of the room. And I never even change it. You, you know what I mean? I can just, just, if I want to use that patch, I'll just, uh, um, you know, have it, have, have it patched up, ready to go. Cause I've got, yeah. what is it? I've got, uh, 32, like maybe 32 channels of, no, no, 24 channels of IO and pro tools along with another eight channels. That's just out that feed, you know, my head, my headphone station out there in the, in the booth. I've got a booth over here as well, but you know, that's PCM cool, 70, cool. just an old, yep, just an old classic. classic. These, they're much unheralded. The Roland SRV 330, you can get them things pretty cheap, guys. These are amazing. Uh, they're, they're 140 plate and the 250 plate are just ridiculous good. A Sony uh, R7, I, I should have had them powered up, but I'm not using them today. Uh, good old Yamaha SPX 900. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, that Symphonic patch, oh my gosh. I still, uh, there's nothing in the box that will do that. One of these days, somebody has to figure out what Yamaha did with the symphonic patch and, and recreate it. And this, this is a Yamaha R, R, uh, Rev 7. I only have oh, yeah. that in case this SPX 900 dies because it's got the symphonic patch in it as well. <laughs> and then, of course, another, uh, um, another uh, Insonic. And then, of course, the hardware, you know, the, the brains behind the, the lexicon. But so I'll, I'll go you're making it look like mixing is a lot of fun again. It is. It is. And see it in there. I've got a booth. Um, you can see that. It's it's cool. I keep it vibey. You know, some lights on in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like all the wood in there and everything. Well, we've been going, going for a good long stretch, but do you want to kind of just give us a, a little bit of a walkthrough and show us the uh, uh, Trident console over in A and just kind of get to. a peek at the big rooms there? Yeah, I would, I would be glad to. I'm going to hold the... Uh, if I'm making any go of you guys off, motions, we're gonna go if I'm making fear anybody factor motions, on your rock stars. <laughs> if, I, if I'm if I'm making a motion sick, I apologize. Uh, I need to change the camera view, don't I? Yeah, you can Sorry flip it around that. there. There you go. Great. Yeah, oh, there that's we go. cool, man. I love it. Yeah. So here's the big control room. 
that's the tried. Yeah. Now that's now, a, is that that's an a, 80, 80 series or is that an it, A range? It, it is. It's an 80 series, but it's a very rare one. You see the blue and you're like, wait, that, that, you know, you, if you look at the black modules, you see the, you know, the familiar green and red and you're like, yeah, that's what I expect. The same, you know, the same EQ that they know and love, same preamp they know and love. However, these blue ones are, you know, later on, John, because I've talked to him about this, John Orem, um, you know, the guy who designed that compressor in my room. Yeah. This is his model of this console. You know, years later, he's like, hey, I can do better. You know, so the, the blue strip is his take on like a redo, you know, like what he considers is an improvement in the EQ and an improvement in the preamp. Now, they're different. So, you know, whether or not it's an improvement is going to be up to that individual user because the 80s, you know, are highly revered and known and loved. And, and but um, I will say that the blue modules are pretty impressive. They're, you want, should we get in close and do a little, little sweep absolutely. by and see the details? Yeah. That's the preamp up there. And it's a, this is what blows yeah, me away. Yeah, feel free it's to a, point at anything with your other hand too, if you want. Okay. It's a transformerless preamp, which is what blows me away because I don't like transformerless stuff usually. But this is not a flavorless, you know, circuit, despite the fact that it doesn't, you know, that it doesn't have a, a transformer in the, it's, it's, it's chip based, which usually I, you know, that's not what I love, but man, I tell you what, he did a number, he did a great job on these. That's the EQ and you'll see, I'll show you side by side. You, know, you can see it's a little oh, yeah. different, it has some different uh, settings and some different, um, you know, it's um, funny options. on the camera, it's actually easier to read the old black modules than it is to read the new blue ones. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? The numbers are easier to read. They really are. They really are. But, you know, it's got, it's got a, an EQ built into the stereo bus here, you know, up here. Oh, interesting. So you can give, give a little bit of a shape right there, too. Right, right. And it's also got a compressor, a bus compressor, which is the – this is the, you know, uh, the one I have in my room is the outboard version of the same thing. Oh, cool. Now, one cool thing about this console is it's um, – you see here, it, it's surround sound capable which work, works amazing. So we can assign everything to the stereo bus right here. And that's the control room by assigning, you know, uh, up on the channel strip, assigning everything to the rear bus. That is what I can use to feed the musicians headphone sends. So all okay. I, you know, I, basically that gives the musicians a great two mix. I can put, you know, like take the lead vocal channel, for example, out. So the producers in the control room with me, he can hear the lead vocal, the, you know, the scratch vocal, making sure it works and all that good stuff. The musicians, of course, don't want to hear that. Also, they have, look, at, look at all those layers of console tape <laughs> built yeah, up over the years. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. That it's, uh, but anyway, this is a 48. This is a 48. Uh, we usually use it, honestly, even though this desk can be ran in line, you, you know, most, most of you guys know that, that know Trident know they're a split desk. And... Um, up until this one anyway. And we usually right. use this, right. we usually use this as a split desk. Like that's the, you know, recording and this is the return. Oh, so cool. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, you know, because this is set up to use a different way, but the guy, you know, the staff here were, was, was just so used to that method that they just kind of, you know, brought that way of thinking over to this desk. But then, um, some outboard goodies, you know, some, uh, some more warm audio. I, I, I've got a lot of that stuff, but it's because I love it. Not because they give it to me guys. I know some, some of these guys know was, like, well, yeah, you do a, you do a bunch of promotional videos for them, but it's because I, <laughs> I actually love their stuff. Uh, yeah, API, a bunch of 550 A's and B's, Massenburg, you know, the GML, uh, uh, SSL compressor, Avalon 2055, uh, four channels of UA610, the OA, uh, what, what was that called? Valley yeah, people. Show us the keypacks down at the bottom there. Yeah. At the Valley people, right? Yeah, Valley people. Uh huh. That's it. I have never even turned that on. Uh, those uh, compressors, right? I think. Uh, I think they're noise gates. Noise they? gates, yeah, yeah. They, they made yeah. gates. So I have uh, it, the uh, Allison Research, which it maybe is before that, and it's the uh, gain brains and then the compressor. Oh, look at that even tied instant. Phaser. Yeah. Tell us about that guy. It's broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it sounds yeah, so it, badass. I think. I know. I would. I wish it was working, but it's it right now. It's just a paperweight. 
And uh, but got to get it back up to eventide. They'll fix it. I know. I I, listen. I I, I've thought about that. I really have. Um, SPX nine hundred, PCM seventy. You know, just classic. Uh, the the H three thousand. Yeah. Eventides. The uh, DSers from um, uh, DBX. Yeah, I guess those as well. Those are great. One sixty five. The LA three A's up there at the top, right? Yeah, I've got yeah two two. uh, uh, two LA three A's and the 160 VUs right below them. There's an 1178 and uh, an, an old 1176. And the drummers uh, were so famous for their gates. Yeah, yeah, the 1969. And then over here, uh, the API 3124. That's the one that I brought in here since I wasn't using it. And then uh, a bunch of warm audio stuff. That's you know the the same preamp that I've got. I, I think I've got twelve channels of that in here. That's groovy. Uh, well, um, do you want to um, that uh, move on to the, the rooms and just kind of see the rooms and the tape machines as we go by? Yeah, there's the tape machine. There's the uh, Sony tape machines and and uh, was that's, that the dig- that's... digital tape machine there or was that the analog? No, we we they. <laughs> They had the original digital tape machine uh, in all of Nashville here at the studio. That's kind of their claim to fame. That's what put oh, them right. on that's the map. Like yeah. That's an analog Sony. Yeah. And then a uh, little tape slap, you know, the Love uh, it. Love it. box thing. All right. Let me walk you guys this way. I'm sorry if I'm making you all sick. Anybody need a coffee on our way through the kitchen? Then? Yeah. Right. That Jason Aldean, you know, if they – any any country music fans, they know who Jason Aldean is, and all his records have always been done here. He's never. Oh, that's great! Look at that. You've heard yeah. a Jason Aldean song. It, it was done here. So look at that twenty four foot ceilings. Look at all that wood. Wow, beautiful, isn't that beautiful? Man. Drums and strings and bra- anything that needs to move air. Brass sounds flipping amazing in here. We've got a great house kit too. You know, it's just almost. Uh, it's almost a necessity nowadays. Budgets are just so different than what they used to be. A great snare drum collection. Yeah. Uh, swing this way. I apologize if I'm going too and fast. Got, large. That's the ISO booth. So basically that ISO booth is like you just take one big room and then you build another smaller room in the middle of it, right? Yeah, that's the way this place was built. Absolutely. And you can tell, I don't know if they get a good feel for how big this room is, but it's this room is large, this booth. And it's because when this room, when this uh, studio was was made back in the early '80s, we were coming out of the '70s where drums were recorded in a small, you know, booth. Right. And right. so, so that's what that you know that's why it's that big. It was going to be a nice, comfortable size booth for for drums, you know. So. Um, and then look at another little ISO room just built for the piano. That's great. Yeah, that's the yep. Yeah, the Yamaha C7 is in there. And there's now, also, has, it, has any of this live room been redesigned in the past, you know, 15? No, years it is. It, it is. It, when you walk in here, it is still 1981. <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to go a little bit slow. Uh, uh, Hammond B3. Beautiful. Uh, I think this one, I think this is maybe 1957. I, the guy, I don't, I don't own this. The guy who, who does told me, and I can't remember the year. Um, but there's a there's a row or a Wurlitzer. I'm sorry, we yeah. we don't actually have a Rhodes. It can, if if you can see the the, the room is a mess. But there's a booth right there. Can you see that door? Yeah, yeah, Look. that's cool. Okay, there's a pretty good sized booth there. That's you know generally acoustic guitar. And then if I pan up slowly, you see that the 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 uh, oh, that's balcony. Nice. Yeah, that's another booth. You know, kind of a sister to this. You put booth. the background that, singers up there. Well, typically it's just uh, steel guitar amps or electric amps or something like that. You know, when we run out of room, uh, you know, now that the drums are done in a big room like this, you know, almost every day, that booth there turns into, uh, on, on rhythm section days, turns into guitar amps. And you can uh-huh. comfortably fit two of them in there because we got, you know, so many rolling gobos and baffles and that kind of a thing. So you can get two in there pretty easily. And, um, you know, you're not using very high gain because the amps are pretty screaming loud. So even having two in there, you don't really, you know what I mean? You're not getting crosstalk, you, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Bleed kind of thing. Well, that's cool, um, man. Well, thanks for showing us around all the live rooms so we can see all this stuff in the layout. I mean, the studio is awesome. And your, your tour of all the gear and telling us how you use all this stuff is just, that's great, man. So Great, great. I'm glad to do it, man. I'm going to get in here where you can, where I can see you guys there. 
Sure, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, no, I can so, actually see. Joe, thank you for doing this for with us. Um, we're going to have to uh, schedule to have you on the podcast, do a full interview and everything, really dig into all this to. stuff. Let the rock stars know, like, where should they go if they want to learn more about you, learn more about the studio, and, and go check it out? There's an Instagram page called Treasure Isle, I-S-L-E, Studio. Uh, okay, and that's, so go see more pictures that's where they need to go to see the studio. On Facebook, I have a, an In the Mix with Joe Carroll. Joe Carroll is J-O-E-C-A-R-R-E-L-L. So it's In the Mix with Joe Carroll is my, like, brand page on Facebook. And then I have an In the Mix underscore Joe Carroll on Instagram. And that that's that's good ways to to find me. And and if they want even if they wanted to book the studio, that's probably where they would do it. You know, is is, is right, there. Great. That's so cool, man. Well, dude, again, thanks so much for hanging with us, dude. Um Rockstar, thanks very much for watching this. I hope that I uh, all of us are doing well through this this lockdown and I hope we're all healthy. So that's that's the most absolutely. important. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Take care everybody. Stay healthy you too, and lay low. And thanks, Joe. And I can't wait to come over and see it in person once we get freed up. Absolutely. We'll have lunch over here at Brothers. All right. Sounds good, dude. Thanks for joining us. And, and a shout out and a thank you to Mark Rubel, too, for uh, setting this up and making the introductions. Absolutely. All right, man. Cheers. All right. Bye-bye.